but most of all, one that promotes human dignity. Poverty has been a constant for hundreds of millions for this and past generations. This we must change now. Ensuring climate security, food security, and energy security is paramount. Let us not rehash the climate story. We know it. We must act now. Ready and sent took place two o'clock the morning. Well, all of us was in the house. I, ha I had a video with it um, showing all we was inside and they just keep pelting and pelting and pelting. Bottle and stone, brick like, you know, like what they dig out on the road and they build in the road. All the windows at the front with a glass door. They had recently changed, you know, them fancy. You see on here, them fancy. Uh, yes. And um, it ain't good. We just frame all the glass, the break up. The attacks escalated with one incident leaving one of her sons injured. His Bible. I don't want you to lie. I don't want you to lie. I want you to tell the truth. So you swear that you're going to speak the truth right now. Yes, that is a court today right now. Good. Did the court put me out? No. When I went to move out my things, who, who and who I went there with? Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. Stupid black people like you make this country where it is, and that is why all kind of foreigners gotta come in because of stupid black people like you, Mr. Tom recalled. After the back and forth, Mr. Tom said a young woman exited the car and inquired what was going on. He said then a vendor from the entrance of the parking lot came over after she overheard the racial slurs and inquired too what was happening. Mr. Tom said shortly after, the young lady from the car asked him about his designation then she took a photo of his license plate then she left to make a phone call. She took my license plate and then she picked up the phone and she called. I don't know who she called and about 15 to 20 minutes after then my phone rang and I answered and it was the director of culture and he said to me, Minister Charles Ramson wants to see you right away in the boardroom. Mr. Tom said he left to reach with the minister that same afternoon and during their meeting, he began to ask what happened. After relating what transpired, Mr. Tom claimed that the minister asked if he was the security but according to the Mr. Tom, he told the official no but as administrator of the school, his job is to look after the interests of the school. Mr. Tom said after relating in details what happened and committing to get names and numbers of witnesses who saw what occurred, he noted that he was not getting any satisfaction from the minister. After submitting his resignation with immediate effect, Mr. Tom was asked to return to work by the vice president. For years, West Bank Demara resident Rona Day Rashid has endured harassment and violence from a 15 member gang terrorizing her community in Bell West, West Bank Demara. Rashid, a former village councillor, lives in constant anxiety since the gang began targeting her family in September 2022. She decided to resign from her position, believing it was the catalyst for the gang's aggression. The incident took place 2 o'clock in the morning. Well, all of us was in the house. I, ha I had a video with it um, showing all we was inside and they just keep pelting and pelting and pelting. Bottle and stone, brick like, you know, like what they dig out on the road and they build in the road. All the windows at the front with a glass door. They had recently changed, you know, them fancy. You see on here, them fancy. Uh, yes. And um, it ain't good. We just frame all the glass, the break up. The attacks escalated with one incident leaving one of her sons injured. Desperate for a resolution, Rashid reported assaults to the police only to be met with apparent indifference. Progress only came after the intervention of the police commander of Region 3. On August 30, 2022, three men, Tyrese Welcome, Jason Solomon, and Devendra Lal Bihari, were apprehended and charged with unlawful wounding and damage to property. However, the legal proceedings dragged on for more than two years, with the accused frequently absent from court. When the sentences were finally handed down, Rashid found the men absent once again, leading to the issuance of arrest warrants. Yet, despite this legal action, Rashid claims the men continue to roam the streets without consequence. Whenever these boys pick trouble with we and you come to the station, 
you go, they gonna take a report and so on. And when they get to hear who is the people, who is the boys, it just leave us that. It was an ongoing story at the court for almost two years. Good. They were charged nine months each, sentence nine months each. From since the 30th, it took me like two and a half weeks before I could have got to speak to the sergeant of Wales Police Station. Whenever you call, he's not there. Whenever you go, he's not there. I spoke with him. He showed me this warrant. Because I make sure I went back to the court, talk with the clerk to make sure the warrant is done. Because I know sometimes it take time. So the clerk was like, ma'am, what are you doing here again? That the very Friday these boys are supposed to be arrested. Nobody knows know nothing about the warrant. Rashid believes there is a clear protective barrier around the gang members and is urging higher authorities to take action. Tell you the truth, I know Wales will not do anything. So I think the higher authority should step in and come and see what's really going on. So these are the boys and were doing the crime and them and the police's friends. So where are we going in this community? Where are we? we can't go to the station for no justice. Mm. They are doing as they please and they just walk away. As she continues to fight for safety and justice, Rashid hopes her story will shine a light on the issues plaguing her community and prompt those in power to intervene. The silence of the authorities, she insists, cannot go on for any longer. Residents and staff of the state-run geriatric home Palms endured close to six hours of blackout on Monday as the Guyana power and light continues to struggle in meeting electricity demands here. Daily blackouts have plagued Guyana for years and despite the current government pumping billions of taxpayers' dollars into GPL, the situation has remained unchanged. Speaking to Kai Tour News last evening, a resident related that they were left in the dark alone after all nurses and aides went home because of the persistent blackout. A staff attached to the facility confirmed that the place was without power from 1 p.m. until after 7 p.m. The resident of the home told this publication that the nurses went home because they said that they cannot work in the blackout. We the old people left in here in the dark to fend for ourselves. We have some people who can't walk. Everybody just left to suffer. The resident expressed discontentment at the manner in which the state-owned institution is being managed while explaining that the facility has a backup generator but it has been out of order for months now. Opted the pack for the future. The task for us now is to move from ambition to action. Actions that create an ecosystem of harmony between the environment, people, planet, and technology. But most of all, one that promotes human dignity. Poverty has been a constant for hundreds of millions for this and past generations. This we must change now. Ensuring climate security, food security, and energy security is paramount. Let us not rehash the climate story. We know it. We must act now. Meeting the climate finance commitments can no longer be postponed. Forests are an integral part of the climate solution, and it is time that a global market-based mechanism for carbon credit be put in place. Our global food security continues to deteriorate, and the projections are alarming. It is estimated that $90 billion in annual global financing will be needed between now and 2030 to provide a basic social safety net. If we are not able to meet the basic need of feeding our people, the entire agenda 2030 is in peril. It is our collective responsibility to provide the 300 to 500 billion dollars needed to transform our global food system. Technology transfer, insurance for farmers, access to finance, and fair trade rules are all part of the solution. On energy security, this must be built on a platform of equity and access to technology. We must not be divided on addressing the digital divide. Too many, too many still lack the basic of connectivity. AI can be a positive game changer for humanity, but also has the potential to widen the gap between countries and people if we do not bridge the digital divide. 
our global community has a responsibility to ensure that AI is a force for good that benefits everyone. Excellencies, to do all of this, our public policies and global strategies must be aligned and our global institutions responsive. Outdated and broken global systems must be fixed. We must reform the international financial architecture and make it more inclusive and conducive to sustainable development for all. But sustainable development cannot flourish without peace and security. We must end and prevent wars. The Security Council must also be reformed to be more representative, responsive, and democratic. If not, it will lose both its credibility and relevance. Excellencies, as we seek to create a fair and just world, we must focus on including all our people. No region, no country, or no group must be left behind. We must do more so that our women and youth are integral in all our decisions and actions. The future we envision must target directly the more than 340 million women and girls projected to live in poverty by 2030. It must also address the 110 million young women and girls projected to remain out of school by 2030. The 24% of women and girls projected to be food insecure and the 245 million women and girls that will experience sexual or gender-based violence by 2030. The sustainable future we built must be the needs and aspirations of the 1.3 million additional youths the world will have by 2030. Ensuring sustainable development in which access to education, health, housing, and energy must be provided. Excellencies, we must now define an implementation plan for the PAC for the future to address the challenges in building a life of dignity for every global citizen. I thank you. Opposition Member of Parliament and Chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, Jermaine Figuera, on Monday called for the Auditor General's reports to be made public immediately after being handed over to the Speaker of the National Assembly. Figuera said, I believe the time has come for it to be made public after it has been presented to the Speaker of the House rather than it being laid, then made public. His comments were made during a simple handing over ceremony of the 2023 audit report to the Speaker of the House, Manzor Nadir, in the Parliamentary Chamber. The PAC Chair urged that this recommendation be considered since the audit reports are being buried until Parliament resumes thereby reversing the efforts of the Auditor General, Diyadat Sharma, and his team in presenting a timely analysis. Additionally, he said that the public should not be handicapped by not being able to access the document until it is laid in Parliament. The chairman also noted that the function of the PAC is equally important in ensuring transparency and accountability in the use of public funds. He said it's because your skin out your cat make he left you. Court never fucking left me. Misha, come. Misha is right here. I don't want you to lie for me. I want you to tell the truth. And I want you to... Who the Bible day? Who am I Bible day? I want you to swear upon this Bible day. That you're gonna speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Put your arm on this Bible. I don't want your lie. I don't want your lie. I want you to tell the truth. So you swear that you're gonna speak the truth right now. Yeah, that is a court we day right now. Good. Did court put me out? No. When I went to move out my things, who who and who I went there with? Me. And who else? Me, she. Animal. You know when me you go who we come not the taxi? Yeah, the taxi man. Good, me you the taxi man. Good. Court put me out? No. Tell them what happened when I reached there. Well, when we reached there with the taxi, the mother was there and we started packing the things. And she was telling her to put your things outside so she could collect it. He didn't put her out. Did she tell you put your things out so she could go show away? And then after we start packing, we stop them, put it in a taxi, and we leave from there. Thank you, Misha. Yeah. He just, I just hear he put a life saying he put me out. 
and he don't want me he left me you don't want me you left me right but there's no everybody knowing these things why you come on life already on telling people them these things you only come now because i will reel out your fucking files and you're gonna hurt your heart because i your secrets them boss now even with your mother you're teething from your mother you're teething from your own mother he said it's because your skin out your cat make he left you court never fucking left me misha come Mishak is right here. I don't want you to lie for me. I want you to tell the truth. And I want you to party Bible day. Go on read Bible day. I want you to swear upon this Bible day. That you're going to speak the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Put your arm on this Bible. I don't want you to lie. I don't want you to lie. I want you to tell the truth. So you swear that you're going to speak the truth right now. Yeah, that is a court today, right? So let me clear some fucking things up on this internet this morning. You see this right here is Ronda Longhorn. This is Ronda Bob. All right. That was the woman that went in the lockup over Labor Day weekend. Free Ronda. Not Ronda Bob. Ronda Longhorn. This is the woman court talking about the lash. Not this woman here. So I never meet court in my life. How the fuck y'all could be mixing me up with this woman? How? Jesus Christ. Big difference. Big, big, big difference. Some of y'all want me to fuck you around news. Run the bob, run the long horn. Alright? Now, Kurt. You care about Lola's shoes yet? As a nation, if you know your worth or uh, when you're hurt, you know, of course, it's on the internet like Lola and Kurt. Duh. Oh, I'm out. A natural way to stay ready, baby, because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. The ultimate male supplement, men's total wellness formula. Packed with essential nutrients for men's health. She'll call you Mr. C. Um, he was put on bail. How much, how much money were you put on bail? Around Twenty thousand dollars bail. And what was the, what was the, um, what was the reason for you to be put on bail? What it? Court. He had to go to court for what? Playing music. Playing music in church. For playing keyboard, but honestly, can you please come? What did the officer say to you? Yes, sir. All right. Amen. The 18th, the 18th of November, I have to go to court. Park and it in the pony road. Yeah, I see what you Yes, it in the pony road. Now I got a call from Mr. Williams. He was here Saturday measuring up my shed. Measuring up my shed and how far it come out and all these things. Threatening to break down my shed. Yeah, threatening to break down my shed. How I'm not supposed to. This is a residential area and I'm not supposed to operate in no business. I understand that. I'm fully much aware of that. Right? But this is a small business. This is not a multi-million dollar business. This is not a Chinese supermarket. Here, this is a small business. It's carry washing. Right? It's carry washing. We got to survive.